Hey everyone, welcome to Wicko, where in this video we're going to learn about React Context, including providers, consumers, and React Context and re-rendering. So to start off, what is React Context? Well, React Context is a tool introduced in React version 16 that allows for easy sharing of state among components. In other words, React Context allows us to pass data between components without using props. But so what should be stored in React Context? Well, React Context is a way to manage state globally, but not all data should be stored in React Context. Only data that does not change very often should be used with React Context. For example, React Context can contain information on the currently authenticated user or application preferences such as light or dark theme. This is because React Context data is meant to be consumed and not frequently updated. So why was React Context created? Well, React Context was created to avoid prop drilling. And prop drilling is when props are passed down through multiple levels of components to reach its final destination. Usually when prop drilling happens, components that don't even need the props have it passed through them. Let's create a quick example of prop drilling. So here is an example of prop drilling as we have a user object that we pass through component one. So we pass the user object to component one, and then from component one, we pass it to component two, and then from component two, we pass it to the pizza component where it is eventually listed out. So notice how component one and component two don't even touch the user object. This is a classic example of prop drilling. With React Context, we could have the pizza component consume the user data directly without passing it through component one and component two. In other words, we could access the user object directly in here without passing it through these two components. So let's create some React context. In other words, let's change our application here to use React context as opposed to prop drilling. Specifically, we will create a React context for our user object. That way we can have it consumable throughout the application. To begin, we first need to create a context. We can create a context using the createContext method. This method is native to the React library. The createContext method returns a context. We capture it in a variable called userContext. UserContext is now a React contents object that has two useful properties, provider and consumer. So let's talk about providers. So every React context object comes with a provider, and a provider is simply a React component. So let's return the provider component from within our app component. Now, everything placed within this provider component will be able to access our user context without prop drilling. However, we need to specify what our provider component can provide. And this can be done with the value prop. Whatever we pass to the value prop will be provided to any component nested within the provider. For us, this is the user object. And now let's talk about React consumers. So the other component that React Context provides is the consumer component. The consumer component is simply a React component that subscribes to context changes. To demonstrate this, Let's first remove the prop drilling that we have with our user object. So now let's access our React context from within our pizza component by using our consumer component. The consumer component here requires a function as a child, and this function receives the current value of the React context. In this instance, this is our user object. This function also returns a React node. So within our pizza component, 
let's access our user object with our consumer component. And it doesn't look like anything is showing. So let's inspect our console. And we can see we get an error that the React is not defined, most likely from right here. And I believe this comes from, we can import React directly from the React library. There we are. And we also, nothing is being rendered because we need to pass our component one to our provider. And now we get what code's favorite food is pizza. And we've completely avoided the prop drilling of passing the user object through component one to component two, and then to the pizza component. And so the argument to this function here is what we provided to the provider components value prop. So right here, which is our user object. Therefore, we can print the name and favorite food properties. This is a lot cleaner and avoids passing the user object through component one and component two, both of which don't use the user object. However, using this consumer component is fairly verbose and can cause a pyramid of doom the more context we consume. Luckily, React version 16.8 released the use context hook and the use context hook is a simpler way to consume data from a provider. To use the use context hook, import it from the React library. What it takes as an argument is the React context we want to consume from. So here, we use the use context hook to consume the user data. We can then print the user's name and favorite food as we did before. It is clear here that the use context hook is a lot less verbose than the consumer component. Another benefit of the use context hook is we can create a custom hook from it. Nevertheless, both the consumer component and use context hook allow us to access the data from this provider component. And finally, to finish this video, let's talk about React context and re-rendering. So previously, it was mentioned that the React context should only contain data that is not frequently updated because React context is meant for data that is to be consumed and not updated. This is because if the context data updates, any component that consumes the context will re-render. Therefore, a larger application with multiple nested components that all consume a context could suffer from performance issues if the context is frequently updated, because this would cause every single component to re-render. But this is my video on React context. I want to thank you for liking and subscribing today, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Have a good one.